Hello, this is Mark Montgomery. I'm the founder and CEO of KDL. I wanted to continue today our little experiment uh, with the first video on the K-Yield Enterprise Pilot. It seemed to work pretty well. We've got some good feedback and good questions, uh, including one of the, uh, my advisors who said it was uh, folksy but effective. So uh, that's good because uh, sometimes I think folksy uh, can work uh, to explain uh, complex systems in a simple uh, manner that's understandable. That's what we're attempting to do here. Um, my email address is markm at kyield.com. Uh, if you'd like to get a hold of me uh, on our website, kyield.com, and at kyield is uh, uh, me on Twitter. Uh, today, okay, video number two, human economics and adaptive neural networks. This is a, a big area that we did not have uh, time to cover uh, in the previous uh, video, um, and it warrants its, its own... Uh, uh, special uh, time and focus here, so uh, move on pretty quickly here. This is the UML of uh, K Yield Enterprise, which is a unified modeling language. The uh, diagram and actually uh, demonstrating the schematics of the system. Uh, I used a, uh, a, a shape in the, the shape of skull in the human brain. Um, for a couple of reasons. One is, is just to visually show and demonstrate and remember how important it is to design the architecture to uh, protect the individual knowledge worker, uh, if for no other reason than to uh, protect the enterprise or uh, in public uh, the, the greater good. Um, it is inspired uh, in large part by the U.S. Constitution, which uh, is a genius uh, architectural design uh, in my view, and it has, uh, including the amendments uh, that, uh, that, that demonstrate and understand and enforce the need to uh, protect uh, the individual and individual human rights, um, you know, f for reasons other than just morality, that's a good reason on its own in ethics, but uh, also to actually protect uh, the greater good. And in an enterprise system um, in the organization, um, the same basic philosophy works. Um, okay, well number one here, uh, I wanted to start with actually uh, Russell Borland, my late uh, uh, partner, business partner, Dr. Russell Borland. Um, he, in a network that we were running at the time, a pioneering uh, global network for uh, uh, thought leaders, we were discussing web economics and e-commerce and uh, sort of global economics and global adapt uh, adaptive neural networking in one of our forums that had you know literally uh, many of the, the smartest known minds in the in the world. It was open to the public, but attracted uh, Nobel laureates and professors and boards of multinationals and analysts and those sorts, all kinds of uh, very intelligent people. And we had a, a discussion on on uh, sustainable economics and uh, a little debate in Russell one day. I don't know that he is the original of this quote, but um, I'm attributed to him because I, I'm not sure. Free only works when everything is free. Okay, that speaks to the, the uh, original problems with the web and the internet um, that uh, where you have, uh, for example, half the, the uh, economies uh, work for the government now and, and half don't in mature uh, uh, economies. Uh, well, those that do not have um, their, uh, you know, well-being taken care of are actually generating the taxes for those that do uh, to a large extent, and um, and we're being undermined in the private sector by those that are uh, being exploited for their knowledge or even offering, uh, you know, uh, for free and freely for the benefit of the greater good. However, as we've seen in recent years, it's not necessarily uh, in the benefit of the greater good, whether inside an enterprise or in a global neural network, uh, if we've got a crack like this in the foundation, uh, a structural crack in the foundation of the global economics. And we've seen that manifest recently. So, uh, But uh, this is very important to understand in, uh, in developing an architecture that works is uh, far more difficult and complex and more fragile than uh, my experience has demonstrated. Um, so free is actually known as predatory pricing. Uh, 
uh, it's it's a strategic uh, predatory uh, uh, pricing uh, model uh, that is known, for example, in 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 uh, pretty uh, extensively in small business uh, consulting that I have a lot of experience in. Um, and it has very dangerous macroeconomic uh, impacts. Uh, so on to our, our uh, sort of solution to this. Uh, and originally on the web, it was understandable. It came out of the academic and scientific community who, who, who generally don't have to worry about uh, the uh, you know, market economics uh, as the, the majority of humans on planet Earth do. Um, and it didn't have the structure. It was built to just share knowledge not to encourage, incentivize, and remove disincentives. Um, and it worked very well for what it was intended to do, but it lacked the architecture uh, in the global web and internet uh, for sustainable economics. So uh, we, we realized that at the time and debated it and, uh, uh, and worked on architecture that needed to take place before we could do it. In the past several years, as these have come together, I've been working on uh, what the Robert Nielsen has uh, captured uh, uh, last year in, in, say, in describing K yield as knowledge capital, provides now knowledge capital. Um, well, I'll describe it a little bit more as currency. Um, and actually, uh, in being adaptive to uh, the organization, which, uh, you know, uh, we're talking about enterprise adaptive neural networks here in our K yield enterprise, we needed a basket of currencies because every organization is different. Um, unique uh, in actually its uh, structure and tax structure and motivations um, and missions. Um, so one currency does not work for all organizations. Um, so we have a menu that's tailored to the organization. That's just intended to get started uh, with the system and then the, you know, the client can continue to tailor as needed. Um, this is one of the structural problems, I believe, in our economy. And it's certainly one of the structural problems um, in enterprise relative to knowledge yield, which is my theory that uh, K yield is based on, um, that came out of the same time frame in the, in the 1990s. So number three, uh, we need to, to privacy, uh, you know, which is uh, because of culture. Uh, not all cultures of privacy in, in some cases is fine, but you've got to balance uh, the need for privacy and openness and innovation. Otherwise, you have a situation where you know some organizations are crying for uh, and, and passionate about open innovation. Um, well, you know, if you're a, a small business innovator, uh, open innovation. If you don't have the right structure in place, you end up working for free. So that's another structural disincentive uh, in our economy that we're trying to address here. Um, the culture. Uh, and then, uh, of course, uh, alignment, and uh, and and this this goes really back to uh, architecture um, and how important it is. Uh, so, uh, under you know different needs of privacy, employees, uh, patients, and healthcare, uh, regulatory issues uh, in healthcare uh, are many parts of the world, and then liability issue, which is often uh, uh, misunderstood and under under uh, appreciated. Uh, falls within the governance that we talked about in, in the first video. Okay, over to number four. Uh, from our pioneering, we ran two networks, um, and I didn't really publish much on what we found there. One was a leader in small business, and another was for global thought leaders, uh, about five years in length. Uh, and, uh, and one of the key findings that we found from this that is, you know, a seed in KEO, one of the things is, those who contributed the most were compensated the least. So there you have a structural disincentive because we didn't have the architecture in those days to overcome this problem. Um, and there were also structural disincentives uh, in the individuals and the organizations that, can, that, uh, uh, that received most of the benefit um, from the open innovation. And so that's one of the structural issues because the, the sort of the smarter people are, uh, the quicker they catch on to it. And that's, uh, you know, one of the moral hazards and structural disincentives in the economy that we have that we're suffering from. It's also one of the key issues inside especially large uh, enterprises. So this is a structural disincentive that we worked on. It requires architectural design and to overcome. And this goes back to this issue again. 
uh, you'll, you'll see a pattern here. It always goes back to design and, uh, and, and, and why it's designed in a certain way. Okay, one of the things that is not well understood I wanted to brief on is the incumbent conflict in uh, some IT uh, companies that are responsible and have uh, influence over the architecture. The reason why we embrace standards is not because it's efficient or uh, you know necessarily uh, fun uh, or, or effective, uh, but uh, it's because the, the opposite problem of incumbents have conflicts uh, because they understand in some cases uh, that they are the biggest beneficiaries of not uh, having um, you know, knowledge capital and a functional knowledge currency. Um, the exploitation of knowledge workers, um, um, I would argue that in the end, um, it also hurts them. But by that time, uh, uh, so much damage is done to the economy that uh, you know uh, we've got massive problems. So, uh, in other words, don't rely on incumbents to overcome this problem, uh, because uh, based on my own personal uh, conversations, uh, trust me, it probably will not happen in the time frame you need. Number five, a trust management. It's all about trust. If you don't have trust, you don't have uh, much of anything. Um, and so there we need to, uh, to manage the trust. We need to align interests. And to do that, we need to remove disincentives um, and provide functional currency. It needs to be adaptive. And we need to get to a point where it's collaborative versus exploitive. You don't see that in so-called open innovation because the architecture uh, doesn't exist in most cases uh, to overcome this problem. Um, and so there it's exploitive and uh, too exploitive for the good of the own, their own organizations. Word gets out um, and uh, when you have this situation you'll start to see the enterprise uh, lose good people uh, and they'll lose support uh, throughout the, the globe, global economy pretty fast. Uh, at least in terms of uh, you know where they need the help. That goes back again to uh, architecture. So a brief on k -Yield Enterprise Pilot number two, human economics and adaptive neural networks. Substantially we're talking about knowledge capital, the need for it, uh, why the architecture is important, uh, which is based on our system that we showed uh, in the first uh, video, uh, the patented system that enables uh, this to uh, to be able to manage the knowledge yield in the enterprise, um, you've got to have an effective uh, knowledge capital, a knowledge currency that's functional. So uh, there we have our brief on, uh, on the humans in the neural network. Thank you.